Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sa Talk Show. And today is 2021st, 2021st, uh, June 8th. Right now it's 8 o'clock in the afternoon, San Francisco time. And uh, we are going to talk about random, random today, okay? So if you have questions and uh, stuff, post in the chat box. And I, I'll answer it. I'll get to it. Okay. And best to mention my name, Xali. Okay. Uh, so I can see. Okay. First of all, what to do? So I'm. I don't know what to do. So first of all, let's look at. You know, there's only three people, two people. So let's look at some of the. Um, let me put on my iPad. I patch because I have a bit cross eye. So let's look at some maybe some Emacs. We can talk about Emacs, about keyboards, about uh, quite a lot of things. Actually, let, let let me just start to go over my blocks. Okay, the blocks I've been doing. So okay, so there's a code update for XA HTML mod, and uh, you can grab the code here and put in your init if you want to. This is a great function, or you can download the XA HTML mod. Let me show you what that does. Okay, so this command does this command basically just delete tags. Okay, so for example, here's the HTML file showing browser back to Emacs, and uh, you see, delete the tags. You see, delete, 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 delete. Okay, undo, 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 undo. Okay, that's what th that function that tag does okay now okay xa diet mod now this is another mod on github i added two functions uh so for example let's see let's go to uh let's go to the directory okay go go to the directory and go to for example okay show in browser i mean show in desktop so this is a fantastic uh, by the way i'm calling uh xa show in desktop the code is all on my website. All the Emacs command I call, it will show up on the pink window. And you just search for it and you'll find the source code and you can use it. So I open this directory and I press a button, show in desktop, fantastic. And now I'm, we are in Windows. So Windows, you press uh, Alt V for view, extra, uh, wait, and then L, wait. Uh, Alt V L, the idiotic windows. Okay, so now you have the big icons. Now let's see. Let's say this, this keyboard. Okay, I I did a review of this keyboard. This is this is called Signum keyboard. Just search for Signum S I G N U M. Uh, it's a fantastic keyboard. I have it now in a drawer. I haven't set it up yet. Uh, I did a review of that. Just search for it. You will find my review, Xali, and uh, uh, there's a video. Okay, so let let's say let's just say open. Let's just say open this uh, image. Okay, let's open some big image. Okay, this is the laptop that where I got my RSI repetitive repetitive strain injury the first time in 2005 because I was using this la laptop for one over one years exclusively like six six hours a day. So that's when I got the. Uh, you know, there's a story. Just search for Xa Emacs uh, RSI, you'll find it. Okay, so this keyboard. So I I want to open in Kira. Uh, open key. Krita. Okay, Krita is a. You know, you wait for it to open. Krita is a application. It's a drawing painting up application. It's got a fantastic. Uh. Mascot. Okay, let, let, let me show you. Okay, so let, let me show you the Kira. Okay, close that. So 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 that is the command. Close close close. Uh, kill running kill. No, I want to go back. That, that's JavaScript code. Okay, close that. So anyway, I now I'm opening Kira so I can start to draw stuff. Okay, I can start to draw. So actually, don't save it. No. Okay, so that's. Krita. Now Krita's got a fantastic logo. Let me show you. Okay, so you go to Xali keyboard block. You scroll down. Then you go to pen input. So there's lots of um, you know interesting pen devices. We you know so 
So so I got this cheap Huey t- Huan uh, drawing uh, tablet. Okay. Now drawing tablet tablet is fantastic if you use this on Windows uh, because it has support. For example, I can I can I can use it to scroll in in, in you know I can use it to as a mouse replacement. Let, let me put my microphone away so you can see, and I can you know press a key to do a let's say let's let's do de- let's do this uh, screenshot, and I can start to write Chinese. <laughs> okay. So you go buy it. So it works great on Windows, but however, on the Mac it sucks because Mac sucks. You know, Apple they don't support pen computing by default. They want you to buy the Apple pen. They want you to buy iPad and the, or, or the Apple um you know the touch, you know, the Apple touchpad. That's that's why it doesn't support it on on the Mac. So I have a full review here and uh, let me tell you about Krita, uh, okay, fantastic mascot, fan- artwork, okay, this is the judgment of artwork, you know, you millennial generations, you don't have, you, you have no idea how to judge artwork, all you know is memes, <laughs> okay, so Krita is a fantastic artwork, so they got this mascot, and Japanese, the Japanese are crazy about making these, um, these figurines, and they are really high quality, you know, Usually they cost like fifty dollars to a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars, and you see tons of boobs. Okay, Xa art. Okay, let me show you what what what's that figuring about. So you go Xa arts. By the way, I'm going to merge my website into one Xali dot info and Xali dot org. Get rid of the you know different domains. Uh, long story I talked about. So here is the artwork, artwork of human animals throughout history. Well, yeah, that is, that is true. Some of these are ancient. You know, this, this one is 2,000 years old. Leda and the swan, 2,000 years old. Uh, and uh, so what am I going to show? Oh, yeah, I was going to show you the jung jung, jung jung, and, and full of girls, you know, girl, because girls is the most important element in human animals, okay, girls, young girls, that is nubile girls, not old, not women, not old women, young girls, that, that is why you see them everywhere, old, you know, Asian artwork to today's artwork to every ad, every, you know, every website, movie, today's movies, you know, uh, theaters, you know, boobs, tits and ass, you see them everywhere. Why are they everywhere? Because to us human animals, they are the actually the girls, young the young girls. They are the most important element, and that is because they they girls are the people who uh, make baby who 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 bear uh, children. Who you know that's the most important. So that is why you have you know uh, ladies first. You know protect women, women and child, children, women and children. This women and children that you know because they are the most important. Uh, so yeah, I want to show you the Japanese. You know the Japanese. You know Japanese. You know here here they are the Japanese, <laughs> fantastic, beautiful, extremely delicate. You know uh, craft craftsmanship. Uh, you know with modern technology you know this these are not just this requires high technology uh because of the plastic material science and 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 so on so you have you have quite a few action figures you know they don't call you know in american you call these action figures you go to toys toy r us which is no longer around or you go to walmart you go to the children's section you see action figures <laughs> and they are crude and idiotic on the other hand the japanese they have a you know they have a thing for you know they have dedication to 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 arts so here is a japanese version of the batman uh, you know, the, then, you know, superheroes, Wonder Woman, Iron Man, okay, that, you know, so they are also making uh, American, you know, uh, comic uh, figures. 
Uh, so anyway, so so Japanese artwork, okay, uh, then there is, uh, you know, it's kind of, anyway, different makers, they have different styles. So it's kind of, they have, uh, you know, then you have tons of boobs. So these are American, you know, these are white men's fables and, and, and stories, okay. Mythos, mythology. So then, but you, uh, I'm, I want to show you the, you know, the, some of the, um, the Japanese ones. So, so here is a Japanese one. You see that, you know, this one is like $200 USD dollars. So you can actually, and today, starting about 10 years ago, they are on Amazon. You know, you go to Amazon. Okay, this one is not available, but you go to, there's, uh, you, if you turn on JavaScript, there's related, you can buy tons of them. Tits and ass, essentially. Uh, okay, so wait, uh, what happened? Okay, did I close it? Okay, I did. Okay, let's open it again. Let's turn on JavaScript. Okay, refresh. Go down. Go down. You know, classic, uh, beautiful sculptures. Okay. Uh, you don't see those. You don't see much of this anymore. Uh, you know. Not because we cannot, because but p today's people they lost, uh, you know, they don't have the they, the sense of beauty is gone since about two thousand ten, you know, earlier than that. But I would mark two thousand ten. Uh, okay, so Japanese artwork. So I wanted to show you some of the Japanese ones. You know, the uh, you know the Japanese they incredible and and most of them are comic book Japanese. Uh, what American calls magna. <laughs> or anime, you know, characters. Uh, so here is one of them. You know, every time I, some, you know, there are so many, there are literally thousands of them, you know, comics book characters. Uh, but I used to, every time I see them, you know, I haven't been reading, you know, since, since I was teen, I was, I read a lot of that of that in Taiwan, but I haven't been. So, and I'm getting old. So I, you know, uh, but every, sometimes I see these, I, dig out, you know, who is the character and I read about the stories, you know, so she is from Devil Survivor, Survivor 2, Devil Survivor 2. Her name is Fumi Kano. You can find it on Wikipedia. Okay, so, uh, and her dress, okay, that's remarkable, of course, that's uh, Chinese Qi Pao. And uh, any, anyway, the Western people, that you know, you guys don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> All you know is cultural appropriation. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, and, you know, then, then Japanese, they have, you know, look at these things, okay? So anyway, that's the Japanese Japanese version of action figure. But what they call technically, sometimes in English, they call it PVC figure. PVC is a, uh, a special type of plastic, okay? Uh, and, you know, J Japanese, you know, they, uh, they are crazy about these things and 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 also it's incredible incredible okay incredible the word incredible incredible they this one you know this this is from a thing called let me show you okay uh this this is uh battle fleet girls okay let me i'm going to show you what they are it has to do with nazi okay uh, a word the white people are obsessed with. World War Two. So there is this thing called uh, Fleet Girls Fleet Girls Collection, which is a, a game, one of the most popular game in history. Okay, uh, something like that. Top 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 five. Uh, so what what is this game about? So in Japan, you know, created it. You know, World War Two. They model the warships of Japan and then other countries, you know, uh, World War II warships. Then for each ship, they have a girl to represent the ship. So, for example, this one you are looking at Yamato, the biggest uh, battleship. Yeah, the biggest gunship in human animal history. That is this one, Yamato. And she is represented by this girl, okay? giant huge boobs <laughs> so this game again uh, so so this is Yamato um, 
you know, they have a girl to represent each, you know, of the battleship. Or sometimes, you know, they also have cruisers or submarines and all that. So, for example, these girls, one, two, three, four, five, six, these six girls, they, you know, they have a arrow with a bow. They, they represent the um, carriers, aircraft carriers of the Japanese uh, World War II battleships. <laughs> but uh, you know the interest in, the interesting cultural remark i'm going to make is that what a wonder it is you don't have you know why why how come doesn't the german people you guys a lot of you guys why, why don't you german people create a game like that where you glorify the german battleships <laughs> you don't see that <laughs> what a wonder and and look at the girls this tits and ass it, oh, am I am I mistaken? Am I not seeing tits and ass and pussies? Tits and ass and pussies. They represent the battleships of World War Two of Japan. And what? How come Germany doesn't make that? Oh God, the German must be stupid people, right? Uh, okay, so there there you have it. And uh, and it, this is not niche. Okay, this is not like oh it's underground. Oh, we, you know, this is a Japanese train station. With a poster of this, of this fleet girls collection, plastered all over it. Then there's a airplane with the fleet girls collection. Can can call it, call it what, what, however you call it in Japanese pronunciation. <laughs> An airplane of of this thing, amazing. You know, Jap 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 Japan. Okay. Okay, that's about that. So I was talking about the, uh, you know, the 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 PVC figures. Okay, let's write down today's uh, what we talked about. So we have a log of what happened. Okay, so that that copy the URL back to Emacs and make it link linkify at least fantastic. And we also talked about Krita. Okay. Okay, hold on a second. So let me let me let me just open that. Okay, open that, open that. There's a lot, okay, so so there you see. Close that, go back. Okay, so we were talking about because of, of this, so drawing software, Krita, okay. Make a link. Now drawing software, Krita, Krita is a, a new one. Uh, it's also, is it open source? I think so. So it's a GIMP alternative, you know? Why? Let me show you, okay? So here is Krita, okay? Let's close it. Now I also have a command. Wait, let's go to Krita, okay? So let's say Krita, okay? So JPEG, so for example, so so you have the Krita screenshot, then you have the Krita, let's say, let's open that one, okay? Now let's open in GIMP, let's see. So there's an Emacs command you can find on my website. Start opening GIMP. Let's see how long it takes. The GIMP open source program loved by the free software and open source fanatics. You know, so it opened. Now let's open this in Krita. Now I can tell you, uh, you know, it, it, it's just better, okay? Uh, uh, you know, seems to me, although I haven't, I don't use these programs much. Mostly I just use, you know, crop and stuff, crop, rescale and something like that. I don't use them much, but it appears to me Krita is like the new and better one. Okay, but anyway, so anyway, so there you are. So there you have it. So close that, close that, uh, okay? Shrink the window, close that, close that. Okay, Krita, and what else? Okay, so then I'm going to show you the... Copy that, put it here, put it in my... Uh, okay, so so what what what's up? So let's see the comments. Okay, let's see the comments and where we are going going. So I was talking about Xar Diet, uh, Xar Diet uh, Emacs package. You can it's on GitHub. 
and uh, there are quite a lot um, commands. You can convert JPEG to PNG, PNG to JPEG, or you can reduce colors. You can remove meta, you know, meta information like meta information. For example, you take, for example, let me, let's see, let's open Krita again. So, for example, you take photos with your phone and you upload on, on your blog and whoops, your photo, like the photo you see actually contains your address you know, the GPS coordinate. So you can see, so for example, if I want to know the hidden data associated with this image, I just press a key. Okay, so let me show you the pink window so you can see what command I call. Okay, I press a key so you can see the command is sar diet show metadata and, and you are looking at the metadata of this image which does not contain uh, spurious things. So, but if it does, then you can just call this command and you'll just, you'll just remove the metadata, okay? So that's a bunch of commands uh, in this package, xardiet.el, okay? You can try to uh, use it. Okay, that's it for that. Let, so now let me read the comments. How long have I been talking? Let's see. Uh, I've been talking for 30 minutes. So hi guys, what's up? Fuzzing. Good morning. Fuzzing. Good morning. Sid Ali. Good morning. J Jeremy Junkin. Good morning. Fuzzing. Do I have a secret love for Unix philosophy? No, I don't. <laughs> but however, I may. Do I have a. Let me ask myself that question, okay? Do I have a secret love of Unix philosophy? No. I fucking despise it. Do I, you know, secret love? So it's not, you know, I don't, do I have a love for Unix philosophy at all? Maybe a little bit. No, I don't. I fucking fuck Unix philosophy. <laughs> Truly. So why do I use Linux? Why do I keep using, you know, why, why is my whole life revolving around the Unix, Linux stuff? Well, that's because I'm a nerd, okay? I'm, well, because first, I don't like big giant corporations. So, so for example, back then, 90s, in the 1990s, you have like, okay, you can choose Microsoft, Microsoft, or you can use uh, Mac. I was a Mac user for like almost 20 years, and I also used Microsoft. But when, you know, I'm a, I'm a kind of a nerd guy, so I, I don't like giant corporations. I like free. I also like freedom. I you know, I talked about this before. So it happens. You could say, you know, it's my personality. I like the Unix kind of stuff. N not, not the technology, okay? That's important. Not the technical, not, not the bash, not the technology. It's the worst fuck possible, the Unix stuff. I like the cultural, you know, the cultural association of the Unix, Linux kind of stuff, okay? Because I don't like giant corporations. I don't like under control by authority. I tends to be more like rebel like okay so i like the you know i like the hacker types somewhat somewhat okay but i don't but anyway unix technology is the worst fuck you know so because so uh, you know i'm gonna start to rant for 10 hours if i talk keep talking about that polyvinyl chloride okay something like that maybe you are right I think we are still waiting for his confession, trying a uh, dark table now, dark table now. What dark table? Okay, so you guys don't have a question. Okay, so let me go. So let's see what we're going to talk about next. So let's talk about, uh, let's see. Let's, so let's put this in my talk show so we have a record. So, uh, so, so we've been talking, let, let's clean up this page, okay? Showing browser, right? Showing browser. What? What? Do I want to save? What? What? Uh, modified. Showing browser. Okay. So, Xa talk show. That's today's we uh, talk show and show the video. Okay. Show the video and turn on um, JavaScript. Okay. So. So those are the topics we've talked about. Let's see what else. Okay, beautiful girls. I love them. Oh, oh, love them. Uh, okay, and uh, then Japanese. Okay, Japanese. 
uh, HTML delete tag. Okay, copy that. Put it here. Okay. Uh, okay. Back to the topic. Okay. So, so now let's go back to Emacs. Let's see what else I'm gonna talk about Emacs. Okay. Uh, Emacs. Okay. I've been working on my HTML mod. I've been working on a tutorial for HTML mod. So here's the home page of my HTML mod. Uh, you can find you know lots of command, but I started to do so. All these commands are commands in some HTML mod. So for you Emacs users, this might be suitable. You 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 may find this usable, not necessarily, because some HTML some HTML mod is focused on focus on focus on writing HTML manually. Like my six thousand HTML files are written manually. Okay, let me let me show you my. Um, okay, shall we? Shall I? Okay, press a button and open the PowerShell. Okay, so you are seeing that command. Start open in terminal. So from Emacs, I control the universe. So now let's go to let's CD. Okay, now so a PowerShell. Okay, now I'm in my web directory. Now let's do, uh, let's do the recursive include anything HTML file. Okay, uh, let's count how many how many file how many there is. Okay. I think that's it. So there are about maybe thirty thousand files. So oh, now, so there are ten thousand HTML files that I have written manually, tag by tag. Every character I've written, you know, ten thousand HTML files over the past, uh, over the past now by now twenty kind of twenty three years, starting around nineteen ninety seven. 10,000 files. So anyway, because HTML mod, so uh, um, it's very useful if you write HTML manually, uh, but it's useful in general. So what I'm saying is that it is not, so if you compare to another HTML mod that people use today in Emacs, so those HTML mod usually they, you know, like we, when you, if you work for Google, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you know, corporations usually you use a lot of javascript react you know lots of css uh, bundles you know those kind of thing i don't do that so that that is what i'm saying so html mod may not possibly suitable for you because if you work on those things since i haven't i don't work on those things so like the work pattern the need the requirement is slightly different but however you might take a look okay because i you know, I des you know, I worked, I worked on, I you know, Xi HTML mod has been around for by now about seven years. So over the past, you know, of course, I use it every day. So I refine it. You know, uh, you might find you you might find it useful. Let's see comments. Okay, keyboards. So let's talk about keyboard. Okay, let's talk about keyboard. So, uh, do you have any specific questions? Ask, ask it, ask it right now. Okay. Yeah. Do do ask do ask any particular question you are interested in. Okay. Don't don't like suggest me a topic to talk about. But instead, if you have some question that you wanted to know about keyboard, and you think you know you might want to know you want to know my opinion, then ask it. You know, the more specific, the better. The better you know, you know, the talk, the flow, the information I will be able to give. Okay, so uh, so let's talk about keyboard. So I have okay, I have only twenty minutes because I have to stop. Let's see what else. Uh, I you know anyway. So let's stop Emacs. So let's go to keyboard. So what is this? Close. Okay, so XI HTML. Copy it. Go back here. Uh, Show this. Close that. Close that. Paste it. Close. Okay. Let's talk about keyboard. So keyboard. Let me just show you what I, you know, what happened to my blog in the past month or so. 
Okay, this is not complete. Uh, so the idiocy of happy hacking keyboard. I got a new photo thanks to thanks to Rezi. Okay, anyway, <laughs> he collects he collects happy hacking keyboards. He's got you know if you go to Discord, he's got six six of them. Each one is two hundred to three hundred dollars. You know he collects <laughs> he collects the worst keyboards on earth. You know, happy hacking and uh, and uh, and uh, you know the uh, what's what's those name the you know topo switch what's the name the uh, a the um, ah wait I must remember the name happy hack uh, oh you guys say it okay tell me what you know you guys say it so what uh. It's a very popular brand in Japan. Okay, they make they make keyboards using the Topper switch, which is the same switch that Happy Hacking uses. Topper is a company in Japan that produces the Topper switch. Um, shit, I don't remember the names. Fuck. I, I you know it's on my website all over, but um. So anyway, so okay, just for the sake. So what's the name of that keyboard here? Uh, Fioco. Okay, Real Force. Yeah, Real Force. They have a red A. Real Force and Leopard. Leopard is a so Real Force is also a company in Japan that makes keyboards with Topa switch, and Leopard Leopard is also a uh, Leopard is a company in Korea. That also makes keyboards with the Topa switch. So these keyboards are very expensive. You now Leopold, they cost like two hundred dollars, uh, two hundred dollars, you know. And Realforce is cheaper. Some 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 of their brands are cheaper. Okay, some some of their models are cheaper. So anyway, so so let's see what's news. Okay, this one is interesting. So this one, and, and I think so. If you are if you like happy hacking keyboard, this one is much better. Okay. This this is a better by a magnitude. So this one, this one is from Kinesis. Okay, now let me show you. Let me show you the real force. That's right. You are late, Sun. Sun Zhe, will you switch to VS Code? Not likely. Not you know. I might, but not. You know, not in the near future. I see because I because it takes a lot of time to learn it. I talked about that before. Uh, about VS Code, the the situation is that VS Code considered as a technology. VS Code, the editor, potentially has is much more powerful than Emacs can ever do. Okay, because VS Code with JavaScript, it, it, they their technology, JavaScript compiler and technology and associated technology. Is a magnitude beyond the Emacs and Emacs list. Mag a magnitude because for every one single Emacs user, there are about one thousand JavaScript coders. And JavaScript for every you know every com programming language compiles to JavaScript today. GoLang, Haskell, uh, you know the uh, lots of uh, you know uh, technology wise JavaScript and you know VS Code, which is what VS Code is written on. JavaScript is a magnitude beyond Emacs. Emacs this is dead. It's like you know it's not moving. So JavaScript and and JavaScript using uh, VS Code using JavaScript the technology is a magnitude beyond uh, Emacs. Okay, this. So why haven't I switched? I haven't switched because it because I've been using Emacs for twenty years. I if I switch, I'm gonna be very slow. You know, I I gonna take time to learn, and I'm going to you know I need to write my own you know stuff like keys in VS Code in in JavaScript, uh. But it's gonna take time. So for three for three months, I'm gonna be very slow. So, and I kind of literally, if I do that, I'm uh, uh, literally uh, I'm abandoning my twenty years expertise in Emacs and Emacs Lisp. So. You know, so there's a you know there's a advantage and disadvantage, but so but 
right now I, I don't have the time to spend on VS Code. I need to do a lot of things. You know, I mathematics, Wolfram language. You know, I one of the thing, thing I've been wanting to uh, tell you. I might want to talk about it, but anyway, I don't. We don't have time today. Uh, let's talk about keywords, okay? So because 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 Sid at least you know asking about keyboards. So let's talk about keyboards. So anyway, this this keyboard Kinesis, okay? It's better than uh, happy hacking in so many ways, and it's also cheaper than happy hacking. First of all, it's got thumb keys, okay, small space bars. So it so 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 from so many considerations, this keyboard is much better than happy hacking, okay. From the and this one is programmable. Happy hacking, happy hacking. The you know the. The under two hundred dollars version is not programmable. The classic Happy Hacking Pro, the newer Happy Hacking called idiotically called Happy Hacking Hybrid, that is programmable. But that one is three hundred fifty fifty dollars. So this this one is new, interesting. Okay, uh, this 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 from Kinesis, the, you know, not my keyboard. So let me show you my keyboard. Okay, so so let's go to so let me show you my keyboard for a second. Okay, so Kinesis Advantage, and uh, then Ultimate Hacking Keyboard. I show it almost in every one of my videos. Okay. Okay, so let's put it back. Okay, so so it's made by the you know the same company Kinesis. You know, so it's in interesting. I I think. You know, I already have enough keyboards, and I want them to be ergonomic. But if you don't touch type, this is uh, I recommend. I do recommend. Okay. Okay. So that that is that. Let's see what else. Uh, let's see what else I talked about. This. So I noticed uh, there is a foldable tablet. You know, foldable kind of phone from Microsoft. Microsoft Surface Duo. So that's what it called. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, some update on sticky key. Now, if you don't know, if you know, sticky key is one of the way to avoid the Emacs pinky. You know, when you need to press Control Alt lots of times, sticky keys is one of the solution. Okay, so I updated on this uh, page. I show you how to do it on Windows, how to turn it on, and how to turn it on on the Mac and Linux. Uh, sticky keys. Um, what? So what's new? Programmable keypad. Okay, so here's a bunch of programmable keypad. Uh, what's new? So the new item is this one, Huon keypad. Okay, cheap. Uh, I think it's pretty good, so far as I know. Um, you know, it's amazing. In the past ten years, so many you know technologies. You know, so these days you can buy it for fifty dollars, and it's pretty good, I suppose. So ma so this is gonna be for your uh macro macro pad, okay? So if you use you know doesn't matter Photoshop, video editing, image editing, 3D CAD work, or even in Emacs, for example, even for browsing, for example, I showed you my ultimate hacking keyboard. That keyboard has sixty something keys. Almost all of the keys ha I have used up as a macro. So I don't you know I don't control C or, or I don't I, I don't do that. Everything is one single press, single key press key operation. So that that is why I recommend, if you have you know repetitive strangery, you know. So this one is new. So let's see, and also this one from Cooler Master. This one has got two wheels at the top. Okay, so that's also interesting. So these two are new. Um, so that's about keypad department. So in and, and here is a new photo of my you know. My keyboards, and this is my uh, software ultimate hacking keyboard. Okay, UHK. So I can show you uh, live my ultimate hacking keyboard macros. So you go here, so you can see. Yeah. So this is my ultimate hacking keyboard macros. Ultimate hacking keyboard is got the most easy to use software. Okay. So I'm gonna. Not going to demonstrate it now. Okay, so that's that keyboard macro. So, 
a bunch of other things. These are kind of the things I need to work on. And here is a mouse. Uh, here's a trackball. Very interesting. It's got two square wheels. That that's a that's a very good thing. Okay, two square wheels. You know, most most good ideas. You know, they don't come to the average people or the hacker types. They don't. You know, they don't. You don't think, but anyway, this two two mouse is a fantastic thing because the mouse wheel is the most optimal choice for any command that involves two directions. For example, page up and down, page up and down, move the cursor left and right, move the cursor up and down, or left and right by words, by paragraphs, you know, or or um, volume, sound volume up and down, or browsers. Browsers tab, you know, previous tab, next tab, or Windows, previous window, next window. Let me show you which one. Um, wait, do I have the key? I forgot where is the key. Uh, do I have the key? I don't have. Okay, so Alt, I don't remember. So Alt, you know, on Windows, Alt Escape. Okay, you see. So that's the previous window, next window. You know, so any command that involves left, right, up, down, or previous, next, or workspace, previous workspace, next workspace, the most, the best, the optimal input for device for that is a mouse wheel. Okay. Uh, yes. So so that's why that's why I say this two mouse wheel is a great idea. In fact, you know, you, you, you anyway. So. So that's uh you know so this this one okay this mouse I think it's an old mouse but I'm not sure this Japanese guy he reviewed it and he you know this guy is a Japanese on Twitter he is a trackball expert he's got like almost every trackball ever made a hundred of hun maybe hundred of them like you know he, this this guy got all the trackballs ever made. And he, you know, he's talking. So these are his photos. I got permission to use it. So he is, uh, you know, he opened this up. According, you know, I don't read Japanese, but it seems to. Okay, so this one is made in two thousand six. Yeah, I don't think you can buy it anymore. So anyway, that's this. That's this. You know, this. This. This is part of the trackball history. Okay, so I collect. Uh, essentially, I collect virtual history. You know, I collect photos of the old trackballs, uh, and uh, you know, because some of them I grew up with them. For example, the Marble Madness. This one from this one from nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty four. When I was in Taiwan, I played this. I played this game. <laughs> Fantastic! I love it. Uh, Marble Madness. So, so I essentially witnessed the birth of trackball. Well, actually, the first trackball is uh nineteen sixty something. You know, it's a giant bowling ball. Anyway, so, but these are the early commercial trackballs you can buy. For example, the earliest one is probably so far as I remember is this one. Okay, now I don't know what date is this one. Uh, nineteen nineties. Yeah, so it shouldn't be here. It should be anyway. So this one, for example. In in nineteen eighty nine, I remember I remember this ad. Okay, <laughs> this very funny, and some of them. So I very much remember. It's in my memory. You know, when I was a uh, young like you guys. You know, every day you you talk about oh Apple's new chip M one oh new device new toy Apple's new phone. So back then, you know, you also have this so trackball. This one is the kind of. I want to buy it, but you don't have money when when you are a student. This this one costs like hundred dollars in nineteen ninety. This is you know this thing, and also I remember, uh, for example, this this one. I remember this one, you know, expensive. Uh, when you are a teen, uh, but you want it because you know it's uh, and I also remember this one. So anyway, so this here are the trackball history. Uh, okay, so. I think that's it. I need to shut down in eight minutes. Anything else? Okay, nobody. Okay, so trackball. So okay, so let's see. Let, let's put this on my website. Uh, talk show. Let's go to talk show and uh, paste it here. 
okay, is there anything interesting actually? Yeah, there are some interesting. Um, there are some things interesting. Okay, by the way, I also have a complete tutorial for auto hard key. There is so so right now. If I want to toggle toggle maximize window, I can just press the key. Okay, press one key. You cannot do that on Windows. You have to Windows down arrow and Windows up arrow, two different keys. If you press down arrow by mistake, it will min minimize. It will disappear the window. So that's no good. It's idiotic. So you you use this auto hard key code. I have a tutorial, so you can go there see how to download and so on. Then you can press one single key to uh, maximize. You know, previous previous window maximize. Uh, toggle it back. Previous window, toggle it back. Okay. So this is fantastic. So you want to, you want, you might uh, want to use that. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, how to set switch to how to set key to switch browser. Yeah, lots of technical software tips about um, keyboard shortcuts. Okay. So I have, for example, this is how do you set. This one is about how do you set a single key press to to either go to a application or launch it if it's not already running. Okay, one single key. For example, if I want to, you know, doesn't matter which where I am. If I want to go to Emacs, I just press one single key. Okay, let me show you. Let, 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 let's let's show you. Okay, so if you, if I want to go to Emacs, you see. Doesn't matter where I am, okay. If I want to go to uh, Edge browser, okay. Uh, wait, there, yeah. Emacs Edge browser. This is Chrome, okay. And 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 this is a uh, Power PowerShell, okay. You see. So why do I do that? So why do you want to? You know. Okay, I talked about this before. So what's wrong? You know, normally you press Control tab okay all tab is no good because you have to hold it then you have to decide wh where where is it you have to spend you have to think about oh which one is it then oh you you went over oh you have to go back now you have to hold shift key you know to go back that's idiotic so instead you want a single key such as f f5678 f5 f6 f7 f8 map then map them to the to the applications you, you use the most frequently. There, why? Because that way you uh, establish muscle memory. Because if you want to go to Emacs, you, you, you by muscle memory, you just, you know, uh, by reflex, you will press one key and you are there. Okay, so that is why, that is what this uh, page is about. How to set key to switch to browser. Uh, wait, actually, uh, okay, so, yeah, so it may it needs not to be a browser. It can be anything else. No, I don't use virtual desktop. Okay, I, I, I think it should be banned. Never use any virtual desktop. You know, it works. Sometimes it's called workspace, or you know, don't use them. You know, they begin in Unix, then they started to have that on the Mac on Windows. That's idiotic. Okay, you don't need virtual desktop because your desktop is already virtual. Can you, you know, it's already all the windows, you know, you, by using a virtual desktop or work, workspace, you do not actually kind of generate a virtual new space. Actually, it doesn't happen because your space is just this big. Your windows are already virtual, okay? So, so what the workspace actually do is they kind of create a grouping. That's all they do. They, they kind of create a grouping for your workflow. You know, maybe... If, you know, one workspace for your browsers, one workspace for your uh, image editing work. You know, you have Photoshop or Light Adobe something something or something images. You know, then another you know things another workspace for games or some something like that. So all they do is create grouping, okay, uh, which creates more management problem than it's worth, okay, than it's worth. You know. So, so speaking of that, just search for Xali window. Okay, just search for why window manager sucks. Why tiny window manager sucks, okay? 
then you will find turning window circles circles your ass this fucking website you know stole my uh my number one position because it fucking you know because yeah i, I pre i'm pretty sure it's uh who is this Why tiny window manager suck less? Suck less your ass. Okay, go to this page. Why tiny manager sucks? You know, um, so this is a very popular for being 10 years. So here I give all my reasons, okay? And I suggest to you a alternative workflow. If you try it for a month or for a week, uh, you'll, you'll never use tiny window managers again. Well, actually, you, st the, you see, you may still want to use it. The, the issue with Tiling Windows Managers is that it, it's, it is not really the tiling that is its primary feature, although it's, you know, it's in your name, Tiling Windows Manager, Tiling Windows Manager. But actually, the, the good thing about the Linux Tiling Windows Manager is not about the window tiling. It's about... These applications provide a systematic and elaborate way for you to have shortcuts to control your Windows positions. So, half of the Tiling Window Manager fan fanatics, the e Linux idiots, they are using Tiling Windows man man Manager not because the Tiling, but rather because the the keyboard shortcuts. Anyway, uh, most of them are idiotic. Okay, these people. They have no no they have no brain, they have no idea what they're talking about. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. Um random stuff. So that's it for today. If you like my stuff, donate. Okay, buy my stuff. You go to you know, you can essentially go to any of my website, then you go to okay, go to ksali.info, okay? Ksali.info all the way to the bottom, you can Patreon me, you can Amazon gift card me, you can PayPal me, or Bitcoin me. Okay, do it. And uh, then you can buy, <coughs> you can buy my Emacs tutorial or my JavaScript in-depth tutorial. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Bye guys.